Hello everyone, we are DocuDays UA International Human Rights Documentary Film Festival. This is Tete Tete. Uh, today uh, we are here. My name is Rahik Salerov. Uh, I'm a film critic. And we are here with the directors of Honeyland, one of the most uh, celebrated uh, documentaries of uh, last year. Uh, the most, you know, famous... Uh, uh, the film, I think, got famous, yeah, when it uh, received two Oscar nominations. Uh, some medias uh, told even that is that, uh, that Honeyland is a game changer, uh, that uh, it is a first film uh, that received two, uh, first documentary that received two nominations, uh, two uh, Oscar nominations as uh, international feature and as documentary. Uh, so hello Lubomir, hello Tamara, for the third time we are trying to get through, to, to, to get online, uh, not for the first time. So uh, this is uh, uh, the thing uh, that uh, repeats itself. Uh, okay, at first I would like uh, to thank you, uh, the thank you uh, for the second time for this film. Uh, for me, it was a really heartbreaking story, but before I watched the film, yeah, I, I saw that uh, Honeyland had uh, two directors. Uh, and could you tell uh, how did you meet and how did you start to work together? Uh, I'm sorry, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, didn't you hear the question? Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, this is our second uh, project. We were working um, on another documentary, a smaller one one year before we started uh, with Hanneman. It was called Lake of Apples, yeah? Yes, as as uh, it's a smaller environmental documentary, <clears throat> very different from Hanneman. And meanwhile, we started with the research and start making Hanneman. Uh, how did you meet uh, at all? In, uh, in editing mm -hmm. studio. We met in a, the, one of the rare documentary studios in Macedonia because not, not many documentaries are made, let's say. And uh, we just figure out we can work together. Uh, you know, uh, it's one of the trends, it's one of the good trends as for me uh, uh, in, in cinema, uh, I guess during last 20 years that film, uh, you know, we used to think of a film as a, um, of the film director as a god of the film in film, yeah. Uh, but there's oh, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, in in last uh, twenty years, we see more and more that uh, a pair of the directors, yeah, uh, that collaborating on the film. So uh, uh, was it? I, I don't know. Uh, convenient for you to work together to collaborate on something uh, as two, uh, mm, I don't know, two gods. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, the question of authorship in the cinema and um, to direct something, you have uh, have something to do with author theory on, or maybe uh, with. Uh, Christianity as monotheistic religion, uh, but there's uh, two of you. How do you share? Uh, I don't know the power. How do you? Uh, it's not the power. How do you collaborate? Just collaborate. Well, it's, uh, it's a teamwork. Yeah, I, I... Um, the opinion that the director is the god of the film. Uh, it's just a matter of the time of uh, the history of when films were made differently, let's say. Today, it's, uh, it's a lot more convenient and it's shown that many, many documentaries were made as uh, co-directors uh, because it's more of a teamwork and you manage to cover more areas 
together that one person will not be able to cover. And uh, especially because we were shooting in an area where not uh, it was not approachable at any time. We had to make a, a lot of uh, organization to get there. We had a limited time. So having two directors and two cinematographers were, was very useful because we were able to cover more aspects of, of the story at the, those limited time, those couple of days we were there. Uh, so it was the matter of, uh, I don't know, mechanics of filming. Yeah? Yes. It, it, it was more useful. Uh, okay. Yeah, but... Look, this film, uh, how do you imagine that we filmed this film? We were <clears throat> maximum four people there, two of us and uh, two cinematographers, sometimes with one cinematographer, sometimes without cinematographer, and the protagonist. So... It is not a situation that you are controlling, that, uh, but it is a situation that uh, it's, it's happening and you're in. And uh, with your resources and your skills, your job is to manage to catch that reality in it's a like larger amount. So it is simple. So you Probably, like to yeah. catch it, and uh, the two of you will catch it better, yeah? yeah. Sure. Regularly, we were we will, splitting. We will give a lot of uh, different aspects to the story, a lot of creative aspects that are more, more ideas, uh, more confrontation, which is good for the film, and just it, it's, it's always better because one person can become very subjective, uh, very uh, like uh, lost in his thoughts. And when you share the thoughts, when you share the ideas, you see that something is right or not, and you give more uh, spice to it. Uh, sp ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spice like, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, but it is normal for you, yeah? I, I think that uh, two directors is... Uh, less toxic let's say yeah uh, it is more healthy to do to um, agree uh, on something together to do uh, something as a teamwork yeah for the last 20 years i see many many films made by a uh, pair yeah by two directors instead of one and sure. i think it's good yeah it's uh, it's not that they are relatives or couples yeah it's uh, uh, it's really uh, cinema i think it's a teamwork yeah yes and, and it should be yes it is uh, okay and uh, do you think you will uh, will you collaborate on something uh, after the honeyland we are collaborating already. Uh, so but not as a direct at co-directors. So it's a uh, you know like ongoing uh, collaboration, yeah. Yes. We'll see till now. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know what was uh, a reaction in your own country uh, at Honeyland? No, and there we, are two we, stages. We there are two stages. Uh, pro probably there are different, uh, different, uh, different views uh, on that from me and from Tamara uh, independently. Uh, there was uh, one reaction after Sundance and during the whole year, and it was uh, uh, those were reactions from the from uh, let's say from uh, fans or from people who saw the film and who are interested in film and something like that so it is a smaller group it's like in is industry yeah not only industry Reaction. i'm talking about public but oh, not yeah. wider public not public like festival public, public. Um, no uh, we are talking about macedonia right oh yeah okay uh, so we are talking after Sundance and after the whole year of festivals. Uh, there was a 
certain group of, of Macedonian population who, who was uh, aware of the success of the film and things like that. Yeah. But after the nominations, uh, we were dealing with something very new in our lives, which is total wider absolute public. Everybody. Everybody knew of you and everybody... And everybody knew. comments and everybody want to say or ask something on critic or comment or, or whatever. And luckily we were not uh, in Macedonia that period from during the during oh, uh, why, do you say, why do you say luckily uh because, because uh, it was hysterical to... here <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes uh you know uh, before before uh this talk uh I, I was i was trying to remember some uh macedonian films and i couldn't actually yeah because yeah i remember some uh let's call it yugoslavian films yeah some, Ser some serbian school yeah mm -hmm. like a gr great documentary some uh, sarajevo about uh, oh, yeah, i'm sorry about belgrade uh, 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 you're talking about cinematography at all or about documentaries no uh, i think about even documentary you know uh mm, I couldn't remember any uh, Macedonian, uh, Macedonian, yeah, it's it's correct. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, ma Macedonian uh, films at all, actually. Uh, there are, there are, there is a documentary, short documentary from 1978 or nine, which is also Oscar nominee. Oh. Uh, short, uh, short documentary uh, die is the name and the uh, director is tole popov oh, i'm sure that and, you have traditions and yeah. also there is another uh fiction fiction movie uh, before the rain which is also fiction. oscar nominated yes oh yeah i see yeah um, but it's not that popular around the world of course <laughs> uh do you i don't know do you cherish your tradition do do you have your tradition uh, like uh, uh cherished in media by public by uh no 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 it's uh the public in macedonia is always against macedonian films mostly so honeyland was a surprise so you have to be successful abroad, yeah, to to be. Uh, it's everywhere like that. In, in, in yeah, in some countries. way, in some way, it is like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe it is uh, like this in Ukraine too. Yeah, we have films yeah. uh, which are ac accepted uh, after they had success abroad. Yeah. Well, it is normal. Uh, normal for for our own sometimes because uh international recognition or uh, recognition in uh, in uh, relevant measurable places probably means more and people are more interesting probably it's natural i don't know probably festivals exist no, because of that more it's more about uh, the influence of the western world to i don't know to the East European societies that affects this opinion. From the other the side, opinion. from the other side, uh, there were a lot of uh, not only Macedonian but uh, mostly Balkan movies, uh, which were successful in in the region, even without festivals, just successful. It's yeah. crucial success. So nothing wrong with that, also yeah uh, uh do you have uh, i don't know macedonian film critics uh, and they were against this movie before it had no, international success no no but it was it against was, uh, they were after after the film it, 
there were some opinions that the film represents uh, but the, it was not critics poor, it was not critics the side of macedonia like what journalism it's yeah. like some theoretic writers uh, that were criticizing that we are showing macedonia in a those very, are not critics tamara in a very mm -hmm. poor light and uh, also in a um like a turkish empire uh, uh, Ottoman Empire uh, light because uh, you know how this region was under the Ottoman Empire, Empire. yeah yes and uh, showing the Turkish population it's very common in Macedonian films they 90% of the Macedonian films are dealing with uh, the Turkish Empire over Macedonia in the past so showing the Turkish culture again on the film which was totally unintentional uh, provoked reactions again. so so mm -hmm. the reaction in your own country uh dealt with the question of uh uh once again it's once a again you did it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> even uh, though it has nothing to do with turkey <laughs> or with the history but but yeah. as far as i know uh, you didn't plan to to shoot any uh, to, to shoot uh, this turk woman beekeeper yeah hatija uh, which became a uh, main hero yeah protagonist of the movie uh, well uh, we were not uh, we we, did, we we never carried the uh, the how to say uh, the hate the the burden we never carry the burden of our past of our politics of of anything when we started doing this she film. was just a person for you she yeah was a person who inspired us just the way she is and just her appearance and soul were enough for us to start working just what she does was important to us to start working with her we uh, never thought about the background <laughs> Uh, and um, your uh, traumatic history of Macedonia, yeah? Exactly. Uh, how, yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, uh, but at first, I guess, uh, as far as I uh, remember and I know, uh, that you weren't planning yet yeah, to shoot uh, this uh, woman, yeah? And it was like unplanned, yeah? And uh, that was uh, happened later after this nomadic family uh, moved uh, uh, in. The, the moment when the nomadic family moved, uh, we decided to make this uh, uh, like a mm, regular dramaturgy film, a three-act structure film. Otherwise, we would think about narration, maybe, maybe some other creative solutions, but. When the family arrived and when the conflict was obvious, uh, we just decided to keep shooting observational style and create a three-act structure of the story. Uh, so you you decided to form, yeah, it uh, like like feature film, yeah. It's three acts. Uh, this was something that we saw it's possible during editing. It was an experiment that turned out successful. We can yeah. never do this on shooting because it's a documentary but once we had all the materials and we realized it's possible we tried to do it obviously uh, you you tried to focus on it yeah yes like, yeah uh, it was how this came to an idea uh, we had a lot of material like too much material 400 hours of material yeah and the only way to edit it without getting stuck for was to 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 just create a basic empty storyline and fill it fill the gaps first act second act third act no way uh you know this is interesting uh approach uh and i wanted to ask you uh uh this uh about uh about hatija yeah uh, there's a, uh, there's a sense that she lives in complete isolation yeah that this uh, place is abandoned and she's the only uh, uh, it is yeah it is the whole place is abandoned you're not listening uh, no 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 I hear you I hear you it's okay 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the place is abandoned for something like 70 years. After uh, the 50s. Yeah, she says in the film I that... Uh, it, the wider area there, with 10 villages, is abandoned in the 50s. And her family is there from alone, more or less from the 50s. Uh, as uh, I saw in the end credits, uh, the, there's a special thanks to some people that are... Has, yeah, Richard uh, Brody, Brody saw also that last name uh, of Muratova, yeah, and uh, uh, are they members of family? Yeah, uh, she have uh, family in the neighboring uh, villages, there are two villages, there are more villages that is neighboring the that wider area, yeah, and she have three brothers that are living in the, with families in those villages. Uh, so so uh, she lives. Uh, she lived, yeah, alone with her mother. But uh, now she is living in one of the village, uh, one of those villages where she have uh, a brother and uh, other relatives and friends. Because so we, she moved. Yeah. We put her. Uh, we provide her a house with the first uh, with the first money we have. We we we. We receive as a word from uh, Sarajevo Film Festival. We were shooting at the time; it was work in progress uh, session in Sarajevo Film Festival, and we won a word uh, there, <clears throat> thirty thousand euros, and we bought her a house. Bought her house in another in a neighboring village. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, with electricity, with uh, normal, regular uh, living conditions. Uh, Macedonian yeah. small, modest house, but uh, with all necessities inside yeah so she now moved and he lives uh, uh, at the moment she family. is at the moment she is uh, again in this village because of the pandemic oh my god that's yes. that's really uh, uh fantastic uh, actually we have some questions and it's about her family and uh, actually you answered it all i guess uh so, Tamara, do you hear me? Tamara? Hello? I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, when we talked uh, uh, before, yeah, this stream, you said you only read uh, bad reviews. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. It was a joke about that review in New Yorker. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, you have read some reviews, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the most important, yes. Uh, important for you or important no, for the important for the for publicity on, on, on the media oh yeah uh, uh, and uh, uh, we have actually a question uh, which uh, has something to do with what uh, uh, with uh, with uh, what Richard Browdy, yeah, the reviewer uh, of New Yorker, uh, wrote. Yeah, uh, talk. The, does protagonist have a family except the mother who died? Yeah, if she does, why we don't see them? What uh, was it your intentional decision? I guess it was, yeah. They are living in a different place. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we use help oh, from them. I'm sorry? Sometimes we used help from them. Um, they, they help us with buying a house for Atija. They help us a lot, but we didn't, they were not present during the filming. They are living in a different place. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, but we see uh, that, uh, I don't know, we see some festivities, I guess it's Turk, uh, like Stork Festival, mm -hmm. yeah? It's a gypsy festival, more. 
uh, I saw them, I, I saw there, uh, it was similar to, I guess, Turk uh, oil wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is not yeah. similar, it is dead. Ah, Kirkipar or something like that, it's called, yeah? Uh, um, um, Pelivani. Oh. Uh, Pelivan, Pelivan is the, the Turkish name. Is the Turkish name of that uh, wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I, I've read that you didn't understand uh, Hatidji. No, no, no. Uh, we understand Mas uh, Hatidji is speaking Macedonian. She's speaking with four us. languages. With us, she is. And we were communicating on Macedonian, but with her mother and with other family and family between them are speaking Turkish and we don't understand Turkish at all. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, you... Uh, edited this film without knowing uh yeah the first version yes on mute uh why mm, because it was challenging because uh, the tr the translation uh couldn't arrive on time and uh it for us it it turned out a better solution because uh in this way we could focus on the visual uh, as I said before, we because we had so much material, we made this experiment to create a basic fic fiction film structure, let's say, empty timeline. Like and better storytelling, yeah? Yes, and yeah. just fill the gaps. And we started with just the visual. For example, first act is introduction. Let's see what materials can enter in the introduction. It doesn't matter what they say in the shots. It matters if the audience can understand from the visual what's happening, who she is, to see her, to see what she does, to see her mother. Then second act, the conflict. How do we show the arrival of the newcomers? Just visual. Okay, we find a way, we put it all together, and we see where's the empty space in the timeline, and we think about new ways how to fill these empty spaces. We go back to, to Bekirlia, we shoot other shots, just we think what to do to complete this, this story, uh, working with real people, obviously. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, I guess it was uh, your... Uh, uh, your think to 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 I don't to form this storytelling, yeah. What do you mean? Our uh, our thing. Uh, no, no, no. I I I mean you, Tamara. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, let's push it aside. I don't know how to to formulate this question. It's it's too it's too complicated for my English. Okay, uh, so. Uh, uh, you said that uh, there are no, uh, virtually no stage scenes in this movie. So everything uh, you filmed was un no, uh, not staged, yeah? Yes. Uh, but there's one thing about doc documentaries, yeah, you can, uh, we actually don't know what we see in this movie. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean that... Uh, uh, you can edit uh, without. Uh, you can. Uh, mm, do you know what is uh, Kuleshov effect? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so without yes. knowing the context of the film, uh, we can. Uh, it's not the same. Yes, of course. I mean, yes. <laughs> it's not the same. You know, you we we know the context of those particular scenes. Yes, uh, but there, we, uh, but the, we the as action inside them is actually very, very simple. She is digging the something. She's. Uh, it's it's very interesting that you mentioned that the Kuleshov effect <laughs> because that's the the main formula how we did this film to look so much like fiction. Uh, yes, and I, I... that's the rule that will never change in filmmaking. <laughs> that's it. So. <laughs> It will uh, never become cliche. Uh, there's one thing I I keep I keep thinking about documentaries that uh, you know I'm not a great fan to divide uh, feature films and documentary films. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I I think that uh, every time we 
see a documentary uh, I think uh, how many of these uh, created in editing process I guess uh, mm -hmm. yeah no so uh, it is very interesting and I uh, when when critics for example Richard Brody said it's not fair it's not fair that you've done this yeah uh, I don't know is it fair uh, how do you think uh, I think it's I that think the cinema only... is a very artificial thing yeah. The only answer if something is fair or not in film is the audience response. If it's a positive response to the film, then yes, it's fair, whatever is done. If the uh, audience suspects it, then it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you think, Libamir? Uh, actually, I don't... It is not start of an arguing, but uh, I don't uh, understand, Mr. Brodis, what is not fair. Uh, I think he says uh, that uh, we have to understand no, what we what see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not what he says, but I don't understand him. I don't understand the point of the question. What's not fair if something, uh, what, how is it put together that uh, you as an author create an opinion for the audience? Is that not fair? Well, that's the, the point of the filmmaking. If it's not yeah, that, is, then it's I, news. I, then I, it's think he's, I think he's trying to say that, uh, that, that cinema, uh, the documentary cinema is life. Somehow it's life. Yeah. Uh, Yes, it's live, but filmmaking is different from journalism, and we apologize to Mr. Brody that our film is not journalism. Yes, yes, I uh, and it's uh, mm, uh, I guess it is a perfect answer to it. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, I think so too, but I I I, I thought it was uh, interesting to to bring it up. Yeah, and yes, to hear your response because uh, I I saw uh, that you Tamara is uh, are, um, I'm sorry is going to to do a feature film. Yes. Uh, could you tell a little bit about this film? Uh, the story. Uh, maybe. The, I will say, say the short as I can and the most yeah. clear. <laughs> it's a good way to make a pitching when you're not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, it's a screenplay that I started working uh, five years ago before Honeyland and Lake of Apples. And I stopped the work on this only to continue now after all the events. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to continue it on a better way, in my opinion, because now I have a lot of a lot more experience, and especially working in documentaries gave me the the experience, the patience, and the strength to do this fiction the best I can, the most uh, realistic I can. And the 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 theme of the story is uh, running away from the roots and from oneself, and coming back to their roots and to who they are uh you mean uh, to to uh like roots uh, like identity yeah yeah where you come from in a way yeah who you are that you uh, can't uh, hide it and run away from it you can't leave stuff behind unsolved <laughs> and it has to be and it will be uh i i hope uh and feature film yes yeah uh, as far as I know, you shot uh, Honeyland for about three years, yeah? Around three, three and a half, yes. And we have questions about, uh, actually, uh, from uh, spectators of this stream, and uh, uh, how do you understand the success for a documentary director? What does it mean? Do you feel like you reached a success? Success. 
are you successful as a <laughs> documentary filmmaker? Uh, that's a good idea. I think we pr we've proven to be successful as storytellers. Uh, so you think uh, the success of Honeyland uh, because it was a good storytelling? Yes. So I would not refer to documentary especially as a genre because uh, a good storytelling is recognized in whatever form you take. And working on these two films, especially together as a team, showed us how well we can tell a story in different forms, because we've used many, many different forms in, in these two documentaries. We've used stop animation, we've used just different approach, a lot of experimenting. But the point was to tell a story that's interesting for the audience and to get the message right to the audience. So this is a good storytelling. And, and the two nominations in two completely different categories are just proving this. There is not a successful documentarist. There is a successful storyteller. Uh, I think so too, actually. And uh, two Oscar nominations proves it. You know, uh, when, when comparing American to European cinema, for example, uh, many tell that, uh, that Americans, uh, American uh, cinema is a storytelling cinema. It's a narrative. Uh, yeah, it's about the... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the first and last thing is a storytelling and uh, success in USA uh, somehow uh, really proves it and I think you're right. Uh, okay, what was the most difficult during the shooting? Yeah. To return? Oh. Uh, dealing, probably dealing with the... Um, with, uh, <clears throat> the trust of protagonist uh, have, uh, not, not only the basic trust between us but uh, trust between them because we 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 in the film we show one of their conflicts they we we we, we were we witnessed several yeah. conflicts mm -hmm. there and uh, it was difficult to to keep that mutual trust between everybody probably and and it was also difficult to to shoot scenes uh, that you know somehow you are using their intimate moments some like death of the mother or something like that uh did Hatija saw your movie yeah uh sure several times she was yeah. at the oscars uh, what i'm sorry she was in la at the oscars yeah and how did you react the first time uh did you discuss she it she liked the movie yes uh do you know one of the uh one of the uh classics of doc documentary uh cinema uh, jean rouge mm -hmm. Uh, I think the movie calls Recollection, no, not the Recollection, uh, mm, uh, at the end of the movie, uh, uh, Jean Rouge shows uh, this uh, film to, to people he uh, filmed, and he asks, what do you think of it? And uh, uh, when I first saw it, I thought it was a beautiful way to, uh, to, to, to finish the film, yeah? Uh, so uh, she liked the movie. Uh, did she, uh, I don't know, uh, um, was there in film uh, that you have, um, was in the film something uh, about you had the arguments, I don't know. What, sorry? Uh, I, I, I don't like to ask, uh, was there something that she didn't like? Yeah, you said... Uh, no, 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 she was somehow, somehow, although she, 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 she don't have electricity, she don't uh, watch films, she, she is not... Uh, somehow... Um, she was uh, following the 
the story during the filming. And uh, it was not what she saw at the end. It was not surprising for her. She didn't, uh, 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 me, for example, at least, uh, I, I didn't saw a surprise in her eyes. Uh, I, I saw just, um, okay, that's it. We made uh, the movie. It is the movie, okay. Uh, have you discussed, you, you know, you made the film, uh, uh, you made the film with a three, uh, three act story of, uh, about her life. Yeah. And, uh, uh, was there something that surprised her? No, no, uh, nothing. Okay. Uh, now we have. I guess uh, your impressions about Oscar campaign. It's similar to political campaign. Uh, did you participate in political campaign? No, never. I hope ah, I never mean... will. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Okay, uh, I have. Uh, I think. I think we have uh, some about uh, about the minute left, uh, or so, or something like that. Uh, so I guess I I uh, thank you for this uh, meeting, for this uh, discussion, for this, uh, uh, and I uh, wanted to thank you for the movie one more time and uh, to say that uh keep doing what you do and uh yeah. and uh, be uh, i don't know be mm, and be well actually yeah uh, uh thank you thank you for this uh discussion uh thank you for being here, being with us, and I, I, I hope to see uh, your films uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, and Thank I, you for uh, having this discussion in this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, is this the first online festival you participate? Yes. It yes. Is. Uh, do you think uh, let's hope it won't be last or uh, let's hope uh, it will be last let's hope it will be last yeah no okay. we hoped we hoped that uh, two months ago <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it's fine i mean online is fine why not <laughs> why not okay for the spectators i want to say that uh, you on the page uh, of every uh, film on docuspace.org may ask, uh, may record video message to any director of any movie and uh, hopefully uh, they will answer your question in a video message and tomorrow we will have uh, one second, one second, uh, in tete tete in 8 p.m. We'll have uh, directors of the film The Building, Tatiana Kononenko and Matilda Mester, and uh, film scorer and filmmaker Alexander Teluk, uh, and they will discuss uh, the film, it's a Ukrainian documentary, uh, The Building. Uh, and thank you for being with us, and goodbye and stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.